Today we are cutting up this brand new $1500 Yolio R11 frame set. Believe it or not, Yolio suggested this video and I wasn't going to say no to that offer. We will take the frame to Rob at Carbon Bike Repair UK before chopping it in half and comparing it to previous frames I've cut up on the channel. We also do an interesting test to show you just how strong carbon forks are. That hurts. It even hurts repairers to do that. It goes the opposite way. Okay, I can already see some interesting stuff. But the materials they've gone with um, obviously are equi size, so they haven't uh, economized on the top tube on this particular bike. Yeah, consistent all the way around. Yeah, it's not as dense around here. You know, I mean, I, 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 let me let me be clear. This isn't uh, uh, dangerous. It's just about the tuning of the bike and and how efficient the manufacture process is and how much they can control think can you imagine a bike like this dealing with thinner wall thicknesses mm. and messing around with that sort of stuff when you find air bubbles like this which you won't see on a specialized for example or a, or a trek or a panorella you won't see these internal um, blisters if you like so i'm not sure if they do any inspection you can also see how dry this is see so I can just pull this away. See how I can peel it away? Oh. It's very dry. The inside walls are very clean. It's just maybe they're, they could compress a little bit more, especially, again, remember I said to you last time, the radiuses are always the areas in a bike that suffer the most when it comes to yeah. um, trying, to, trying to keep that compression up. Let's go and get uh, that other, that's, is it the trek that was cut in half, the Monda? Yeah. Let's see on the inside if we can do the same. <laughs> to be fair to the Yolio, we're going to look at a, a high-end Monda, trek Monda. You can see they're not as e even as clean on the inside as the Yolio. Not that that really matters, but you can see it's a, Let's, let's see if I can, can you see? This is a lot more impregnated with, uh, with resin. I can peel it off, but it takes some effort and it, it tears off. You see, it cuts like, like I'm chipping. Whereas here, so if you look at the two, Yeah. So let's try on the top tube. You can also see that the radiuses are a little bit more gentle. I mean, it, it does put up a better fight. Now bear in mind what I'm not talking about, we're not talking about the, the construction of the type of carbon itself. We're talking about the, the relationship between the layers. This blade will cut through any carbon. Any carbon, doesn't matter if it's Tureka, high modulus or medium or low modulus carbon, I'll cut through it with a blade like uh, dental floss. It's not the issue here. The issue is the relationship between the, the matrix, the, the, the ratio between the matrix mix, the compression, uh, and uh, the, uh, the amount of resin that's in, this, in the material. Like, let's see if I can delaminate this. Okay, I want to cut myself, but this is almost impossible. I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on that. I'm not hamming this up, right? Let's try that. So what we've, what we've got here is a structure regardless again of the carbon 
the carbon itself. But what we've got is a structure, based on what I'm seeing here, that is dry, so therefore going to be stiffer, stiffer to ride, but more prone to damage. Okay. A little bit more prone to damage, a little bit pr more prone to delamination. I'm going to cut this out down at the junction of the seat stay and the seat tube. I'm very big on, if anybody's read my blogs, I write about the seat tube as, a, as an important part of the bike, probably more than I've seen others write. It's a very, very important part of the bike. Make it easy to chop bikes up, do that. <laughs> wow. I've never seen anything as thick as that. That is Oof. thick, isn't it? Fairly well compressed. I don't see too many too Fair many layer rings, isn't it? Corners, it looks a bit better than that. Yeah. Geez, I'm not taking any risks with the uh, the seat post. Again, uh, thick around the radius and thin on the flat side, which is unusual because I didn't see that on the top tube. But they have been they have been generous there. They put quite a lot of material in that area, and I'm assuming what they've done is do that specifically for the bottle cage, so they get a decent amount of material. Some some brands don't do that; they don't bother, and they come in here all the time to get repaired. That's good to see. Though. Yeah, so that's good. Folks don't really know how strong carbon is. Yeah. Right? So here's a good example. I've cut through the structure of the of this fork. And I've left with just the wall thickness on one side and cut. Just feel how much resistance it gives you. Yeah, that's try and break it. Oh, that's strong, isn't it? That's surprising how strong. See, it's literally cut in half. <laughs> that is incredible. That is thick, isn't it? That's a lot of material. Safety first, huh? Safety first. And it's nicely compacted. It's not bad. Super thick though, right? Mm -hmm. I'm very intrigued to see between these two lugs whether that's solid or not. Yes. But in the old days, they used to use a latex rubber. They can't extract that, so it's okay, it sits in there, it doesn't do anything. When people look at the inside, they see all those little ridges and lines. That's from, from the folds and the, this plastic. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that, that is brutal. That's really, really thick. thick. Very thick. Chances of me ever seeing one of these to be repaired? Probably no. Pois. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you... Yeah. Monstrous. Monstrously strong. So peeking at the Olio R11's head tube and bearing seats, it's clean, neat, and thankfully there is no overspray in there either. There is a clever little taper on the carbon along the top tube and along the bottom of the down tube as well. Lining it up with the larger specialized Venge, we spot the Venge's love affair with carbon, especially at the front of the bottom bearing. Yet the Olio is not shy about its carbon either, showing off a thicker layer compared to the Trifox X10 that we are also comparing to. Impressively, the Yolio's head tube finish is a carbon copy, kind of-ish, pun intended, of the Specialized. Yet its head tube wall thickness stands shoulder to shoulder with the Trifox, a neat two to three millimeters compared to the Venger's three to four millimeters. 
Now what Rob said is, notice the large portion of 3K low modulus weave. The plain weave pattern is designed as a lockout to stop any flexibility, such as in the head tube or the bottom bracket, for example. Shifting our gaze to the top tube of the Olio R11, we see a site that is smooth and well finished. Granted, the internals don't have to win any beauty pageants, but it's still rather pleasing to see that they're looking good. There are a couple of small bubbles, but nothing we haven't seen on other frames. Honestly, there isn't much to write home about here. It's quite standard, in a good way, of course. Swinging our attention to the seat tube, it's clear that Yolio wasn't stingy with the carbon. There is a particular generous layer where the dropout meets the seat tube, hinting at a focus on strength. Upon comparison, the Yolio takes the cake for the thickest carbon, especially along the back of the seat tube, almost doubling the Trifox's thickness. Now, given the issues of seat post slipping and considering most of us aren't featherweight pros, a bit of extra sturdiness in that area doesn't seem like such a bad idea. Venturing inside the Yolio's down tube, we're met with a fairly neat picture. It's not boasting the biggest down tube, which means the walls can afford to be a bit thicker. There is a slightly raised section, but nothing to lose sleep over. It's not a common sight in every frame, but we have seen much worse and more pronounced examples in other frames I've cut up. There's an interesting bit of tape inside the top tube. Rob said that these are likely adhesive strips holding the internal formers in position before air is injected to pressurize the shape. Not something that he has seen before. Compared to the Specialized and the Trifox, the Yolio's down tube is visibly smaller, but again, don't let size fool you. The Specialized has a significantly bigger tube, so despite thinner walls, it's probably packing more carbon overall. It's the overall content that matters, the amount of carbon, not just the thickness. Now, as we slide down to the bottom bracket of the Yolio R11, we find an intriguingly larger section, a feature that's quite unique. And frankly, it was new to us. My educated guess points towards extra carbon reinforcement for enhanced strength. Rob also said, I don't believe I've ever seen a bottom bracket section with a solid core base. I'm assuming this is a press fit and this is to stop over pressing and crushing the bottom bracket. Personally, I'm quite pleased to see this additional reinforcement. Sure, it might add a few grams when it comes to strength versus weight. I'll take the strength all day. So let's fork our way over to the uh, forks. The Olio R11's forks are looking pretty darn good. As this frame is disc brake, it's solid carbon all the way through the fork. No room needed for a front caliper bolt. You can almost trace the direction of the carbon sort of curving around the crown race, which is noticeably thick. Inside the steerer tube, there are these sort of flaky bits of carbon. It feels like a random layer of carbon that's there before the actual bonded carbon takes over. On the comparison front, the Yolio forks are superior to the Trifox X10, which houses a mysterious white chunk, possibly resin, inside the forks and bears a rather thin carbon layer on the outside. The Pinarello fork, on the other hand, is wider, and that is probably to accommodate the long bolt needed for the rim rake. Yet in terms of carbon thickness around the crown race, both the Yolio and Pinarello are in the same league, which is good for the Yolio. Here's what Rob had to say. The fork junction and the crown race looks very solid, possibly an overkill for a performance bike, but in terms of strength, really good. <laughs> now you have seen the inside of this Yolio R11 frame, check out this video where Rob talks all things carbon frames, lots of good info in there to help you understand carbon frames as a whole and what to look out for. Now thanks again to Rob for sharing his time and his knowledge and creating this video. I will see you all in the next one.